So this is Thy Neighbor's Wife, also known as Poison. And to say, if you like the hand that rocks the cradle, you'll like this, would be a bit like saying, if you like the World Cup, you'll like women's football. But I'd 100% put this movie in the so bad it's good category. So please watch this the whole way through to the end, as these early drop-offs are negatively affecting my mental health. Okay. Thanks. So we begin with this guy, Chris Stewart. He's about to get into his car while having some flashbacks of recent events. These start with a business deal he's made at work by asking his wife Anne to flirt with this old guy. I will drink to that. Honey, will you entertain him for just a minute while I go grab those contracts? Blech. Excuse me. That's, um, that's beautiful perfume you're wearing. Your husband will be busy for a few minutes. He said entertain me. And I have a very strong feeling that you know how important this is to him. But it seems more than flirting is required to seal the deal. Well, that was a great evening, Stuart. We should do it again sometime real soon. All of us. Bye. <laughs> The morning after he let his wife get pumped for a land investment deal, he finds out the company, Slider Investments, has hired this woman, Nicole, instead of making Chris the vice president. In the next flashback, after all that, Chris has been sacked. Oh, what a loser! They're bringing in some hotshot executive from outside. So somebody had to go. No, they didn't. She's not doing your job, Chris. Stop lying to yourself. And I'm 38 years old. I can't begin again at some entry-level position. Why would you have to start an entry-level position, Chris? I feel this is a somewhat unnecessarily defeatist attitude. I was in line for a VP, for Christ's sake. Yeah, but were you? Anyway, so because of all this stuff, Chris has decided to drive his car off a cliff. <laughs> then we meet the Garrett family. The family of Nicole, the woman recruited to be the VP at Chris's old company. Sadly, this is necessary because every member of this family looks the same age. But this is the housekeeper, Karina. This is the daughter, Dala. Well, I'm almost 18 and I can do what I want. Right, so you're 17, are you? Of course you are. This is Nicole and this is Nicole's husband, Scott. No, this film was not made in the 1980s. It's from 2001. What? Basically, all you need to know is that Nicole takes her job really seriously. Dala is a typical teenager, even though she's clearly a 30 pluser and Scott just wants everyone to relax so he can get hammered. Cut to Dala at school where there's this unnecessary scene. Oh my god, there's Travis. Hey, I'm Dala. Uh, Travis. You go, girl. <laughs> yeah, alright. Then we cut to Nicole at a board meeting where she's being introduced to her colleagues by her boss, Mr. Slider. He's the only one allowed to speak so they don't have to pay the extras. Smart. The receptionist comes in to inform Mr. Slider that Anne Stewart, Chris's widow, is at the front desk. My husband was at this company for eight years! Anne accuses Mr. Slider of killing Chris. Oh, I see. Slider explains to Anne that the Macmillan account, the one that Chris got her to ban the old guy for, was already in the bag and that he gave it to Chris as a favour. He knew Chris needed the commission because he'd brought no business in for over a year. What? Okay, so now we have all this new information, Chris is starting to look totally deluded. So Anne is no longer just annoyed with Slider, she's decided Nicole is also to blame. What an idiot. <laughs> So she waits for Slider outside the office. She's hiding on the wrong side of the pillar. She'd have been directly in his eye line as he walked out. Anyway, we'll ignore that. Back at the Garrett house, it turns out Dala didn't turn up for school today. I went, I just didn't stay. And Scott and Nicole are arguing about it. So Nicole goes into Dala's room and she's grounded for two weeks. At Slider's house that night, someone is breaking in and it's Anne. She tampers with the light bulb, which wakes Mr. Slider, who goes to investigate with this pump action shotgun he keeps by the side of his bed. Of course. Well, isn't that what most people do? Anne has turned on all the gas, so when Slider turns the light on, the house explodes. <laughs> Back at the garret, Scott has been drinking and is up for it, but Nicole needs her sleep because she's got work tomorrow. So he goes to check on Dala, who later, while grounded, escapes the house via her bedroom window. Next morning, Nicole is on her way to work and Anne is hiding outside her house. She sneaks in through the garage door, stabs Karina the housekeeper while she's in the shower, apparently there's no blood to clean up, and then Anne just carries the body, dumps it in the family's freezer, and hides it under loads of meat. Dala would have caught her, but sadly the garage door won't open. 
While we're young. Yeah, but you're not, are you? Nicole is back home after another hard day at Slider Investments. Harder now the boss is dead, I assume. And she hasn't taken her insulin, so she passes out. Karina has left a note about a family emergency, so that's her forgotten about. So Scott and Nicole go to the hot tub and bang. Then there's a phone call for Nicole. It's Anne pretending to be from the agency, saying Karina's never coming back, but that a replacement will be sent round tomorrow morning. And look who it is. It's Anne Stewart. But now she's using the name Anna Johnson. So from now on, I'll refer to her as Anna. Fine, Anna. So Nicole gives Anna a quick induction and shows her around the house. Oh my God. During this chat, we find out they have a son who's away at school and that due to Nicole's diabetes, no sugar is allowed. As soon as the family is out, Anna locates Nicole's insulin. Later, she uses magazines and clothes chat to get in with Darla and while the family's not looking, Anna adds a load of sugar to the family meal. When Nicole returns from work, she's impressed with Anna's work, but is a bit jealous of how she's getting on with the family. Anyway, the family agrees that Anna is hired and she'll now be living in the Garrett house. First thing she does is inject saline solution into Nicole's insulin. At the prom that Anna has helped Darla prepare for, Darla is planning to woo Travis, who's there with another girl. Oh my God, there he is. Who the hell is that? When Scott and Nicole return from an evening out, arguing as usual, Anna has arranged it so that Scott will see her swimming in the pool. Nicole sees her too, and she's not happy. Scott decides to stay up drinking and Anna comes in to ask him if she can join. Anna then encourages Scott to discuss their marital problems. I understand completely. Anyway, so they bang. Next morning, and the son David has returned from school and he's taken a liking to Anna too. What the hell is that? Anyway, they start banging as well. Back at Slider Investments, Nicole has fallen asleep at her desk and misses an important meeting. She can't stand up properly, but refuses to let the receptionist make a doctor's appointment. No, don't do that, please. I'm fine, really. Back at the house that night, Nicole is working late. Scott is drinking and Anna is in bed with David. Darla is on her way back from a date with Travis, who closes the gate a bit too hard. This alerts Nicole. Cut to Travis and Darla, who are having sex on the freezer. I love that. What the hell's going on here? As if there's any doubt. Next morning, David finds Darla in the bath and it looks like she's off herself. Oh God, somebody help! Dad! Nicole has some sort of seizure and it turns out that she's dead, but Darla is recovering. At the wake, the receptionist from Slider Investments brings over the stuff Nicole left at the office. Anna has to hide because she knows the receptionist will recognize her. My husband was at this company! for eight years was she not expecting anyone from slider investments to turn up anna then comes on to scott but he feels guilty about banging her ages ago i'm gonna forget what happened between the two of us i strongly suggest you do the same it seems scott has now turned on anna and david has turned on his dad you let us break the rules you always played the good cop you should have tried bad cop every once in a while and you hand out a few extra dividends on our allowance but it was always mom who made sure we got to school mom's gone is there anyone left who really cares so David is driving back to school despite there being a storm. Scott is looking through the box of Nicole's stuff the receptionist brought round earlier and he sees Chris Stewart's business card in there, along with a picture of Chris with his wife Anne. How did this stuff end up there? It's obviously Nicole's things because there was a photo of her and Scott in there. So did Nicole hang on to Chris's things or did the receptionist not check to make sure that she wasn't bringing another dead person's thing to Nicole's grieving husband at her wake? Ridiculous. Anyway, a suspicious Scott calls the receptionist and asks if there's somewhere he can take Chris's stuff. He's told that Chris is dead and that his wife Anne, who's listening on the phone, came into work and made a scene. Scott's moment of realisation coincides with a lightning strike that causes a power cut in the house. Scott goes round the house in the dark looking for Anna and she attacks him with a knife in the garage. Even after disarming her, Scott still struggles against £105 Anna. Oh, what a loser! and they end up fighting with tire irons by the pool. Finally, Scott wins, smashing Anna in the face and knocking her into the pool. Yes! Oh, well, that's good. She's dead, and we can all move on. I don't think so. Scott calls 911 and goes back to the pool to check that Anna's body is still down there. And it is. I beg to differ. When the police arrive, they start questioning Scott, but his story doesn't add up, as this woman has been dead for days. Oh, it's Karina. Yes, of course. Now things are beginning to make sense. Anna has swapped the bodies and escaped. So Scott has been arrested, suspected of murdering Katrina and his wife, Nicole, while Anne drives off and live happily ever after. Good. Good. If only Chris hadn't taken work so seriously. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.